This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. You know, just wrap your arms around yourself and just love yourself. And Oh, yeah, yeah. Covetous. Greedy. I want, I want, I want. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Hmm. Covetous. We always equate covetousness with wanting money, but there are other aspects of covetousness that conveniently get overlooked, which are just as bad. Coveting fame, coveting the praise of men, coveting subscribers, uh, stuff like that. You know, Kyle, recently I've gotten a few of these emails, and I'm going to do a video exposing these devils at least, because I figured out a thing with my uh, OBS, you need to know this, so I can show their emails, and the, when I threaten them on the one, and I'm going to make good on that, that's not a threat, by the way, that's a promise, uh, about exposing their emails and what they do, uh, they go to the backup one, uh, least of all fellowship, very clever devils, okay, and oh, by the way, before we continue, it bloke, oh, wait a second, I need my garbage can, appropriate, <sighs> I owe you an apology. I thought you were the one who was sending me these links to that stuff, but apparently you're not. So, anyway, anyway, remember that about covetous. Boasters. Boasters. Look at us. We're Christians. We're not judging you. Yeah, we're just showing the love of God. When they're in deep sin, that's when they need to come into the church. Proud. I just believe and receive. You you stupid free gracers. Blasphemers. One God in three persons. Jesus is not the Father. Unless you believe I am he, the Lord saith, ye shall die in your sins. So you're a Trinitarian. Guess what, Trinitarian? If you're a Trinit you're a Trinitarian. Guess what? You already know the answer to this. You got the wrong God. Okay? Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Mingled with the world. Adulterated. Without natural affection. Truce breakers. False accusers. Incontinent. Fierce despisers of those that are good, and there's none good but God. Verse 3 here. Oh, by the way, if you haven't figured this out, sorry. Uh, we're in 2 Timothy 3, and we're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 5. Sorry about this. This is a little ad-libbed. Uh, got a lot of stuff going on, but let's, con let's continue with the train here. Okay? Natural affection. The phrase, squid, love their own. If ye were of the world, the world would love her own, okay? But without a natural affection in that context, because the natural, unregenerate person, spiritual and body, they, it seems that they do have a natural affection for the things of the world, for the things pertaining to the flesh. That's not what this means, though. Whereas, you know, don't, you know, if you love those who love you, do not publicans also the same thing, okay? And, Again, this is all going to be linked back to the disgusting, heretical lie doctrine of God loves you. Four minutes and seven seconds. Hey, Elder Duck Duck Go, there you devil. You're looking at me. God does not love you. God does not love Present tense, the Christ-rejecting sinner. No, he doesn't. Atheists can figure that one out. Muslims can figure that one out. We, the, the, God loves you. You know, the, God loves you. Uh, two videos will be in the description box uh, for you to digest on that topic. God does not love you. You go around telling a Christ-rejecting sinner... That God loves you unconditionally and he's not angry at you, you're lying to him. Okay, that's a lie. 
Okay, God's love is to be had. And oh, by the way, um, uh, John three sixteen, you devil, is not the gospel. Okay, all right. So okay, so so let's continue. So these guys, these people who are without natural affection, who are covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. They despise those that are good, and there is none good but God. We are saints, okay? If you're saved, you're a saint. That's what Scripture calls you, okay? The world wants you to be affixed to the term Christian. And you look at Christianity again, the divided body of Christ of Christianity. It's a joke, people. It's a joke. It, it, it is a laugh. When you, you got the, these stupid free gracers. Okay, these lying devil free gracers who want to damn you to hell when you take the mark of the beast. These, the free gracers are all liars. They all lie. They all lie. Okay, Franklin, pretty boy. <laughs> you're, the, you're, you're all liars. Okay, they despise those that are good and there is none good but God. The saint who is saved, a saved person is a saint, or someone who is right with God, depending on the dispensation, okay? You're a saint. You're saved, you're a saint. And there's none good but God. God dwells within the saved believer. They despise that what is good. They despise the saints. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. There again, look at the antinomianist, free grace, idiot, devils, lying scumbags that they are. Give you a license for sin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. I'm just, I'm not even going to waste time with it. I'm just going to put the whole playlist in the uh, uh, description box for you. Refuting scripturally, exhaustively, <laughs> refuting scripturally the lie that is free grace. Okay? Having a form of godliness with God. A form of it. A form of it. But denying the power thereof. And Christ Jesus is our power. He is the power. Okay? Not the power of the air, because that's Lucifer. The power of the saint is God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit that dwells within the saved believer. So, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, meaning they're not saved. You could uh, be cute and say, well, a saved person denying the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Hmm. But context doesn't really support that, even though that is something you could intuit into this. But the latter, um, no, the rather that this is referring to people who are lost. And what does it say? From such turn away. Hmm. You, you Christians. You Christians. There are saints out there, unfortunately, unfortunately, who for whatever reason, you, you want to belong to a clique or a sect, S-E-C-T, um, nowadays, they them are called denominations, like King James Bible believe in Christianity. You're more, you're proud, proud, boasting, covetous. I, I, I'm a Methodist. Good for you. I'm a, I'm a Baptist. <laughs> Good for you. I'm a Catholic. God forbid. I'm a Pentecostal. Oh boy. I'm a King James Bible believing Christian. Oh, good for you. Okay, sect. Denomination. And you know what happens when you get involved in this nonsense? Uh, covetous. Coveting the praises of men. Boasters. I feel like Paul for all the people that I've led to Christ through my ministry. Proud. Blasphemers. You're a Trinitarian, guess what? Guess what? You got the wrong God, of course. You got the wrong God. Yes, of course, that will be in the description box for you. Okay, but... Um, <laughs> you're a Trinitarian. Jesus clearly 
refers to himself as the Father. He calls himself the Father. Before Abraham was, I am. Okay? The Hebraic Jews back in the day clearly recognized what Jesus was saying. You guys come along, you Catholic, disgusting Trinitarians. Now bless your heart, and I do mean that in a southern way. Okay, and remember, we got to be graceful for Trinitarians. When I say those things at you Trinitarians, I'm saying it to you Trinitarians who are covert Catholics, trying to defend something that Scripture is totally against. Okay? Like I said to you before on many occasions, Catholicism, which uh, free grace is just another poisonous doctrine of Catholicism, um, you know, you've been lied to by Rome for centuries. So we saints who believe in the true God who is one God comprised of spirit, soul, body, we got to remember to be graceful, to show grace unto you Trinitarians um, who are ignorant of it. But see, there are those also who are not ignorant and yet persist in trying to tell you God is one God in three persons. The atheists can debunk that. The Muslims are really good at debunking that as well. Uh, I mean, it's, it's ri ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay? It's ridiculous. Guys have the wrong God. But see, Christians, 98% of Christians deny the power thereof from such turn away. Now, this video is kind of a response. Now, I'm not going to harp too badly on the individual because, number one, I blocked him and removed his comment. Therefore, he cannot defend himself. So I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. But uh, going to refute what was said. On the music video, and I'll put the, I'll put the music video, and I'll remember to put it in the description box. Okay? In the music video... Uh, we're talking about, you know, uh, music and whatnot. Um, there was a comment left yesterday, which actually really set me off. Uh, told the guy to go pound sand and reminded him that his God loved him. <laughs> yeah, his God, Satan. But an individual, his channel was uh, Elder Duck something. And... His comment just really rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> now there are those who will comment on the videos that the Lord uh, has given me to do that, you know, whatever. Uh, like, for example, when Catholics come along, I usually I pity you Catholics. Especially you diehard, you know, zealous Catholics. I pity you guys. I really do. I really do. You are willfully choosing to go to hell <laughs> or, and follow Satan. And you're warped in your brain. So I kind of, you know, I, I pity you guys. Um, they, I mean, a Catholic can obviously set me off to where I'll... And like I said, uh, <laughs> the, the, the comment that I received set me off. And I was pretty harsh to the individual. Um, without remorse or without regret. Okay. You got another God there, son. All right. But anyway... You know, another kind of, uh, free gracers I have very little patience with. <laughs> very little. There are some that, you know, you come peaceably, you'll be treated peaceably. But generally, the free gracers that come along, you really uh, don't really have much patience for them. Uh, atheists, I'm more willing, you know, atheists, I tolerate more. Uh, I do, because, you know, usually the atheists that come around... Uh, they'll, they'll make pot shots and whatnot, but it's like, whatever, dude, <laughs> you're your own God, okay? But like I said, every once in a while, there'll be a rogue comment that really just rubs me the wrong way, uh, as this individual did. And what this individual did, now, I can't verbatim remember the comment, and like I said, the individual has been blocked, and I removed his comment, and so he can't defend himself. So channel was Elder Duck something, and he made a comment about the music uh, video that was done. It's like, good truth, but he brought up about Keith Green. Keith Green. That disgusting 
Catholic loving, God loves you, non-dispensational, wicked heretic with his CCM music, okay? Um, which in the video, it was nothing really about him personally, but rather what he represented, but more commenting on the thumbnail. Um, but the one guy, this one Elder Duck Channel guy who uh, started on the 7th of uh, 2023 or something like that, um, said, good truth, but you attack Keith Green, some, and I'm not verbatim on this, but you attack Keith Green, therefore it proves you to be the Pharisee that you are. He called me a Pharisee. Now, you got to understand something about Christians. When a Christian, God loves you, who, who, be the, who uh, believes that they got to be like the world to win the world, okay? <laughs> These Christians, okay? They do certain things to defend themselves. Number one, okay? Don't judge me. Only God can judge me. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh, okay. They got a problem with judgment. Okay? Don't judge me. <laughs> they also come up with things. God knows my heart. Okay? And when they say don't judge me, God knows my heart. What are they doing? They are always, without exception, trying to justify themselves and, more or rather, trying to justify sin. And when they call saints Pharisees, it is the same shoe. Trying to defend something that is contrary to Scripture, defend themselves and or defend sin. When they call saints Pharisees. Okay? So, keep this in mind when you're dealing with Christians, brother, sister. They're defensive measures that they resort to. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Don't judge me. That's what lost people do. They've got a problem with judgment. They'll judge you all day, but as a saint with the scriptures, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, come here. Let's start. Hey, don't judge me. Oh, God knows my heart. You're a Pharisee. Pharisee? No, I'm not. Uh, just, hey, hey, dude, dude okay, and I'm going to leave him alone because, like I said, he can't defend himself. But it's like, yeah, yeah, you know what the modern equivalent is of a Pharisee? I'm going to let this out of the bag, and then we're going to look at this. A Pharisee today is a Catholic. Is a Catholic. Or any Christian overly zealous for an individual, or for the traditions of man, or one who is, I was Baptist bred, and when I die, I'm Baptist dead. Or, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay? But the modern equivalent of a Pharisee today is simply defined, simply said as a Roman Catholic. So, and I find that interesting. I mean, not even my enemies say that, you know. And see, that's a very telling thing. Okay? I'm sure if I hadn't gotten irritated and I got that, like I said, that comment... That rubbed me the wrong way. That 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 is like you, you idiot. You don't even know. You don't even know what a Pharisee is. You don't. But see, using that to defend your sin and justifying a devil like Keith Green and his Christian contemporary. Hey, listen to me, Christian. You're better off with listening to uh, 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 like Meatloaf or Jefferson Airplane or Blue Oyster Cult rather than deceiving yourself and thinking that contemporary Christian music is okay. At least they're up front with it. See, contemporary Christian music gives you a facade effect because they say, Jesus, crowd to Jesus, and they touch your heart strings to be quiet because it's earthly, sensual, devilish. Like I said, the music video, and you know what? 
Yeah, I'll be the first one in the description box for you. Uh, linked in the description box for you. Okay? So, why would someone go to a length like that? To defend themselves. And, like, I'm, I'm sure if I would have uh, if would have kept up with it, you know, God loves you unconditionally. God knows my heart. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. Oh, boy. So, what is a Pharisee? Now, we're not going to look in Webster's. This is where we're going to look. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me. <laughs> hey, maybe this, that dude, I'm, you know, but I'm sure, you know, hey, <laughs> well, which, which is the word of God? I can't prove that, so I'm going to shut up. But what is a Pharisee? Well, let's look at what are some defining characteristics of a, a Pharisee. Get the authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of what we're going to be looking at today. Because unlike certain other uh, of these Christians, which I am not, I am not a Christian, uh, I make mistakes, I'm fallible. The authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God, this is perfect. This is infallible, okay? Get the scriptures and read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? What is a Pharisee? Let's go to Acts chapter 23. Let's ver read verses 1 on to verse 9. Now, we're not going to look up first mention or anything. We don't need to because we are going to be looking at defining characteristics of what a Pharisee is according to scripture. If you want to check Webster's 1828 Dictionary, hey brother, you want to put that in the comment section? Feel free. Okay, you can do whatever you want. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God unto this day, until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. Uh, Paul is making a reference on Matthew 23. For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. That's a very telling statement about what Paul, you know, what Paul is addressing. And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, we're going to touch on this in a minute, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope of, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And when he, so, when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisee and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. Look at this, verse 8. For the Sadducees say there is no resurrection, neither angel nor lowercase s spirit. That's significant because when you read in scripture, you see the capital S spirit. That's a reference unto God himself. Lowercase s is one that is imparted or one like the uh, spirit of man. Okay, stuff like that. One that is imparted. Capital S is always a reference unto the Father, who is our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, okay, himself, okay? So, the Sadducees, they were more, I've heard it compared onto being like the Demokamis, more liberal, okay? They like the outer shoe of the religion only, but they don't actually confess, confess that there is a resurrection, nor, neither angel nor spirit. In Judaism, I forget what they are called, um, but there's a sect of modern, to, uh, modern Judaism today that are the equivalent of the Sadducees. Uh, oh, atheistic Judaism, or I forget what they're called, 
but th th there's a division of that, whereas the Hasidim, uh, as far as uh, modern Judaism, which is not scriptural Judaism, which is not, they claim it is based off of that, but if, if the Judaism of today was based on scripture, they would be Messianic Jews, not Hasidim. Okay? What is a Jew? What is that will be in the description box? Okay, that will be in the description box. That's a two-part video, okay? All right? But let's, uh, let's finish up the verse. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. They confess both. Now, whether or not they truly believe that is another story. But they, it's like, okay, yeah, there's angels. You know, there's, there's spirits, okay. <laughs> All right. All right, and there is a resurrection. Okay. And there arose a great cry. And the scribes, there's the third one. Scribes do what? Scribes, scribble, write. Okay. And there arose a great cry, and the Pharisees, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees. Note that, of the Pharisees. Okay? So, scribes are a thing of themselves, but also, scribes can be Pharisees or Sadducees. Okay? Keep that in mind. Okay? And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose, and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man. But if a lowercase s spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. So right away, what do we see about the Pharisees? We see right here mentioned Pharisee, Sadducee, and the scribes. Okay? Sex. S-E-C-T. Okay? Acts 26. Acts 26, verses 4 on to verse 8. Paul again. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation, at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify, that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. Hmm. So what is that straightest, most high-strung, most um, legalistic, most, um, you know, <laughs> retentive, we will say. Okay? Um, high-strung, stuff like that. Okay? And this is where that one idiot tried to infer onto me because of a thumbnail and because the scripture refutes CCM justifying himself okay but about that so the Pharisees were the straightest sect most high strong most um uh, you know most whatever okay the word is eluding me at the moment, and I don't want to be graphic. Uh, what are we reading to? Verse 8. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought... A thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead. Now the Pharisees confessed that they believed in a resurrection in angels and spirits. But when it came to Christ being uh, dying, burying, and being rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and of course shedding his blood on the cross, they denied the resurrection. Go figure that one out. But they confessed that they believed in a resurrection. Angels and spirits. But when the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ 
our father, God our father, actually happened, they didn't buy it. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting, huh? Hmm. And now look at look at uh, chapter twenty eight, chapter twenty eight, and Acts verses seventeen on to verse twenty two. Bringing this up because of sect. See, Catholicism likes to put things into categories, just like her daughters, such as. The theology of free grace. They like you. And what does Catholicism do? You're either Catholic, non-Catholic, or a heretic. And, you know, saved, not saved, or heretic. Okay? They like to put God into neat little boxes. Kind of like they do with their satanic trinity. Okay? But, Acts 28, verse 17 on to verse 22. And it came to pass, that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you, to see you, and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And Jesus Christ is our hope. Who, what's the hope of Israel? Jesus Christ. Who is our hope? Who is the, who is the blessed hope? Jesus Christ. He is the resurrection. Okay? And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came shewed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, it is spoken against. Hmm. 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 Sect of the Nazarene. Oh, and, and um, I, I neglected to put this in my notes. This is a, this is a little impromptu. But in Philippians, Philippians chapter 3, okay? Philippians chapter 3, Paul. Paul. Verses um, 4 on to verse 6. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, in Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, drive, determination, persecuting the Christians, Persecuting the church, and that's not a building. You know, the beloved brother Alexander B. Hartley already did the uh, work on this, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, he did two videos where he goes through the scriptures and shows you what church is. Okay, that will be in the description box for you. You have a question about that? That, that dear brother, that dear saint already did the work, so go ahead and check that out, okay? <laughs> All right. Yeah, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, not a building. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Okay? And in that verse, verse 6, we see zeal. Zeal. The Pharisee, oh, they were zealous. Oh, they were zealous. Go to Acts 15, verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? They were zealous. Zealous of the law, zealous of tradition. But I want to show you this. Acts 15, verses 1 on to verse 5. And certain men which came down from Judea 
taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenis, Phoenici, 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 and Samaria, declaring the con con conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed. Hmm. Saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Hmm. And we're, we're going to touch on that a little bit later. But So we see the Pharisees, they were zealous. Zealous of the Pharisees are very zealous. They were very zealous of the law, of the traditions. But we also see that they were willing to believe on Christ, so they said, but they weren't willing to get rid of the law of Moses doctrinally for salvific purposes. Hmm. Go to Acts 21. Acts 21. 18 on to 21. And, and we got uh, a, a video on this as well, um, which will be in the description box for you. Acts 21. 18 on to verse 21. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, our dear brother James. And all the elders were present, and when he had saluted them, he declared partially, particularly, what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Mmm, zealous of the law. Pharisees were zealous of the law, and the Jews generally were also zealous of the law. But the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross, the law is not binding salvifically. Okay? Salvifically, pertaining to salvation. The law was there to bring us unto Christ. The law was there to show you that you can't save yourself. Okay? And see, this is where the disgusting free gracer comes in and preaches their heresy to damn you to hell. Why? Because they say, well, you're not under the morality of the law, even. Binding doctrinally, salvifically, the law is not binding in that sense. Why? The death, burial, or resurrection, the blood shed on the cross. Okay? But morally, the morality of the law, Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay? Thou shalt not covet. Okay? Romans 13. Alright? Alright? The morality of the law which free grace denies. They're law unto themselves because they are their own God. They're devils. They're liars. Okay? Alright? But see here the confusion. They were zealous of the law. When they established in Acts 15 that not even the Jews could keep the law. And they came out of the Jerusalem conference in Acts 15 preaching the gospel that was revealed unto Paul. Okay? But James, our dear brother, and the video will be in the description box for you. Uh, uh, the will of the Lord be done, but not our way. I'll put in the brackets Acts 21 where we go over this. Our dear brother James stumbled at this. And us and them, when there's actually one body. There's not a body of Jew and Gentile salvetically. Okay? Verse 21. And they are informed of thee 
that thou teachest all the Jews, which are among the Gentiles, to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. For salvific reasons, yes. The morality of the law? <laughs> thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there is anything else, it's basically comprehended in this saying, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Okay? All right? And remember, these disgusting, lying, free gracers, they deny the morality of it. Okay? The morality of it. We don't keep the law today to be right with God or to be saved or stay saved. That No. That's heresy today. Why? Because you're trusting in yourself, see. But that doesn't absolve us from the morality of it, which, of course, the free gracer doesn't want because they want to have their cake and eat it too and justify sin all the way. Okay? Oh, yeah, every chance I get, I'm going to uh, kick you wicked devils. Absolutely. Okay? Now, go to Galatians. Galatians 4. Galatians 4. Verses 17 and 18, not Ephesians, Brad. Galatians 4, 17 and 18. They zealously affect you, but not well. Someone like Catholics, they have a form of their own law. You know, you got you to gotta eat the cookie and you got to abracadabra, woody woody. You know, the Jesuit priest does his abracadabra, hocus pocus, and you got to drink their wine. Okay, same thing. Just flip, just do this. Flip a switch, believe and receive. Save yourself by your own mental capacity. Okay, all right, that's Catholicism. Okay, the, the bridge there, ecumenical, okay? But see, Christianity, dear friend, they zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they exclude you that, they, that ye might affect them. Hey, you're a good Catholic. Look at how zealous you are for the, the wine. I know I say wine and the cookie. Look at how zealous you are. Just believe and receive all the while cussing all the way and watching Hollywood movies and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. But it is good to be zealously affected in a good thing. And there's none good but God. What's good? What is the standard for you, dear friend, whoever you are, for goodness? The Bible. Which one? Well, they're, well they, they all have their... No, they don't. There's only one. The Word of God. The Scriptures. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, Word of God. There's only one. Okay? There's only one. Okay? What is your criteria for judging what is good? If you're not bound to any morality of the law, but you can, hey, and with the antinomianist free gracers, their thing is, the more you sin, the better it is for you because you get more of God's grace. That's exactly what you preach and teach there, pal. Okay? Who's the liar here, devil? Anyway. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And I am not, not, and not only when I am present with you. A good thing. What decides what is good? Hmm? What decides what is good for you? Who decides what is good for you? Hmm? And go to John, uh, Galatians 6, 12 and 16. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ, because they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh and make you twofold more the child of hell than themselves. And we're going to read that today. 
But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. I'm supposed to be dead to that. But yet Christianity says, no, be alive to it. You're being too extreme. You're a Pharisee. Why so serious? Oh, that's a good one for the description box. <laughs> okay? Why so? You're a Pharisee. No, actually, you're the Pharisee. Okay? Okay? For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. That's how your life changes. You can change yourself by your own whatever, but the change in your life ought to come from being a new creature. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. What makes you a new creature in Christ is God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, dwells within you. That's what makes you a new creature. Not that you, by the power and worship of your own will, decide, I'm not going to do that. Okay? And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Just a shoe of the kind of zealousness that the Pharisees had. But you know what else about the Pharisees? They knew the scriptures. They, they knew the scriptures. They had, an, they had a tremendous head knowledge. See, it didn't descend the 18 inches. They did. Matthew 22. The, the Pharisees were doctors, professional, professionals. The criteria, you know, or not the criteria, the similarity, the professional Christians, you know, you got to go uh, to a Jesuit-run cemetery school, get a $100,000 piece of paper on your wall to say, man says, I could do this. But the Pharisees, they knew their stuff. They did. Pharisees, they, they could quote to you scripture. They sure did. They they knew. They knew. They knew. Friday's last Friday's video, I believe we I can't even remember what that video was called. We will um we will it'll be in the description box for you. I can't even remember what that video was called. I know I was talking about what that kid Brandon did. But whatever, okay? But they they, they had the mental thing. Down. Oh, they sure did. I can't remember what Friday's video is called. Anyway, they had it here. It just didn't go down here. There were some that did. But they, they, they still wanted to hold on to their self-righteousness and self-justification with a death grip. Matthew 22, verses 15 on to 22. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Talking about Jesus trying to entangle him. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, mwim, 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 mwim. got a little brown on the nose. We know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither cares for any man. <laughs> they didn't believe that. They're just smooching, just flattering. For thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? What thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Trick question. What does the Lord say? But Jesus perceived their wickedness. Trick question. Excuse me. And said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose, whose is this image and superscription? And they say unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are, of God, that are God's. 
difference between spiritual and carnal. When, when they heard these things, when they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. They knew the law, but see, they used the law to try to trick the one who wrote the law, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. Well, John 3. John 3. John 3. Verses 1 on verse 13. Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus, I believe, is in heaven. I, I believe Nicodemus got converted. I, I do. I do. Because he had enough sense, at least, to be like, are you? But let's read. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Ruler. He was, he, was a, he was a big boy. The same came to Jesus by night, and poor Nicodemus never lost that stigma. That he was too he was afraid of the Jews, his, uh, the Pharisees, of him getting kicked out. He was more afraid of what men would say rather than fearing the Lord. But poor Nicodemus never lost that stigma. He was branded. He went to Jesus by night. Hmm. Same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He says we. I think he was more speaking for himself, but he used that word, okay? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And this is a reference unto the spiritual. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He didn't get it. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, singular, Except a man be born of water, natural birth, and of the capital S spirit, the Lord himself, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God spiritual. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the capital S spirit is lowercase s spirit. Marvel not, see, being born again, being made a new creature. Okay? They're uh, born again, okay? There's a heresy that the, um, the theology of free grace likes to point out that, well, being born again is only for the Jews. Paul never talked about it. You're right, he didn't. He defined it. He defined what it was to be born again. But you're right, he never said born again. Just like the Lord never said he was God. He didn't have to. He said, I am, okay? That poor arguments. Verse 7, marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye, plural, more than one, must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, now hearest the sound thereof, but cannest not tell, and but cannest not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the capital S Spirit. And you can tie in John, 1 John 3, you know, when you're sealed, you know, you go to the Lord the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon him, and he saves you, he seals you with himself, God the Father dwells within you, okay, all right? But marvel not that I said unto thee, you, ye, everybody, must be born again. Verse 9, Nicodemus answered, and said unto him, How can these things be? Look at the Lord's response. Nicodemus knew the law, but he was missing something. Why? Because at the moment, at the moment, Nicodemus couldn't see past the law. Okay? He called him Rabbi. Rabbi, Rabbi. Why call Stami good? He's the Mashiach. Son of David. Oh, excuse me. Let me get this video done.
excuse me. Okay. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Again, Nicodemus knew the law, but he was missing something. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify of that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? Mm. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Hmm. Hmm. And also go to Acts chapter 5, 33 and 40. Acts chapter 5, 33 and 40. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. When, you know, Peter and John and them said, we ought to be, uh, rather to uh, be, obey God rather than men. Okay, and they were cut to the heart. Cut to the heart, they gnashed their teeth and they don't want to hear it. Pricked to the heart, uh, like the Philippian jailer and the guys in Acts chapter 2. It's like, what must we do? Okay. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take, ye, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be someone, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves who were slain, who was slain. And all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. There's the only scriptural reference to the Maccabean revolt. The Apocrypha is not scripture. And drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or if this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest haply ye be found, even to fight against God. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So see, we looked at this because the Pharisees, they, they knew their stuff. They knew the scriptures here. Now, Nicodemus and even Gamaliel give evidence that they actually believed what they, they the, the scriptures. Nicodemus needed a little bit more help along the way. Like I said, I, I believe Nicodemus is in heaven. Don't know about Gamaliel, but I do believe Nicodemus is in heaven. Okay. Now go back to John 4, uh, John 7. John 7. Verses 45 on 52. Then came the offer officers to the chief priests and Pharisees. And they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? A little arrogance there. Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? Have any of us believed on him? So we are the measure of the criteria of judgment. Us. Ah. The, uh, the traditional ch teachings of the church have, uh, are one God and three... What, what, what are you talking about? When you say church, what do you mean? Oh, you're referring on to a building. So they, they who measure themselves by themselves and comparing themselves with themselves are not, are what? Not wise. So right there, Pharisees are showing, wait, we're, we, not the scriptures. We are the measure of judgment. We are the ones who are, decide what is right or what is wrong. And they were in that capacity for that, and we're going to look at that, but they themselves, 
They had it here. It didn't go down to here. A few of them did, like uh, uh, Nicodemus, Gamaliel maybe. But Nicodemus, I, like I said, I totally believe that Nicodemus is up in heaven. But let's continue. But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. See right there, they knew the law. And they boasted themselves up in their knowledge. In their knowledge. Can't remember what uh, Friday's video for the life of me was called, but it, that'll be in the description box, okay? But, see, we, because we, because we know here, the rest of the people who don't know, they're cursed. The pride going on there. Nicodemus saith unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, there's that stigma, being one of them, Doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. Hmm. That's a telling answer. Who are you? Are you with them? Huh? Are you cursed also? You know, search and look. Out of Galilee, no. See? Hmm. John 8, 3 on to 11. Beg your pardon, I'm having some issues as we speak. Let me finish the video. <laughs> Let me get it uploaded, please, Father. <laughs> John 8, 3 on to 11. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law, they were looking at this to show you their knowledge of the law. But look at what they did. They purposely set up this engagement to trap God the Father. But they knew that they knew. They had the head knowledge. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And in sin they, con they concocted this whole thing. And he called them on it. And he again, and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, being, beginning at the eldest, even on to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. What are we reading to? 11. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned me? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now, Jesus was not talking about sinless perfection. The law was still binding before this happened, okay? So, there's a dispensational difference here, okay? Sinless perfection, no. Go and sin no more. That's what he meant, not being talking about sinless perfectionism, okay? The law was still binding. He had yet to die, bury, and rose, rise again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So keep that in mind. He was not telling her to stop sinning. Okay? Just keep that in mind. All right? Now go to John 9. Go to John 9. 13 on the 16. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. This is the dude who uh, Jesus put stuff on his eyes and cured him of his blindness. Whew. It's like something in my esophagus that I can't swallow that happens. That's why you're seeing me drink water and stuff like that. And it's difficult to swallow. 
They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. What are we reading to? On to verse 16. Then the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and I do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God. Because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. So they didn't believe, going on, they didn't believe that the dude was blind. They got the parents, and the parents testified, Yeah, that, or he was born blind. Now he sees. How? We don't know. You ask him. And he'll tell you. Skip down to verses 26 on to 34 now. And he told them again. Okay, the parents were like, he, he was born blind. This is our son. How is he see? I don't know. Ask him. He can tell you. Verse 26 on to 34 now. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? They asked him the same question when he already told them. He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Therefore, wherefore would ye hear it again? Would ye also be his disciples? Oh boy, a little dig at him. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. And they wouldn't know where Christ was from, even though that they knew that he was to be born in Bethlehem, okay, of the city of David. But yet they didn't know where Christ was. Christ himself's like, you know where I'm from? What does that mean? What is that talking about? They didn't know that he's God the Father, that he's the Mashiach. What, they had the scriptures. They knew... They knew scripturally what they needed to know about the Mashiach, God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But when Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, the Mashiach right there, they didn't know him. Why? Because they didn't want him. So, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. But geographically they did. They didn't know that he was God the Father. They didn't want to know. See? The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind, Verse 33, if this man were not of God, he could do nothing, using simple logic. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins. And dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Hmm. Hmm. See, what, what was the Pharisees' problem? What was the Pharisees' problem? Romans 9. Romans 9. Romans 9, 30 on to 33. I, I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm struggling right now. <laughs> Excuse me. Romans 9, 30 on to 33. What shall we say then? that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion, 
a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And Romans 10, verses 1 on verse 4. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. There's that zeal again but not according to knowledge. But they had knowledge. Not a true knowledge based on wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord. Okay? And they being ignorant of God's righteousness, death, burial, and resurrection, imputed righteousness, by his grace are we saved through our faith. Okay? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. I had the cookie. I had the wine. I belong to Christ's church. I just believe and receive. Okay? I'm elect. You're not elect. I'm at church every time the doors are open. I speak in tongues. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. See, and therein is imputed righteousness. Because a free gracer will come to that. It's like, see, we're not bound uh, even to the morality of the law. For you, devil, it shows. Absolutely. For you, it shows. Yeah. Yeah. What was their problem? They wanted to justify themselves. They wanted to justify themselves. Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Verses 1 and verse 7. Matthew 23 is describing the spiritual climate before the redemption of the purchased possession, more, light, more so before the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew 24 is describing the time of Jacob's trouble. The body of Christ is not on the earth, and during the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end to be saved. Okay? But Matthew chapter 23 is describing the, the, the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And before the time of Jacob's trouble, there's the redemption of the purchased possession. The body of Christ gets taken out before the time of Jacob's trouble. And then the time of Jacob's trouble happens, Matthew 24. And then the second coming happens and the establishment of the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 25. Okay? But Matthew 23, verses 1 on to verse 7. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. See, they, they had the scriptures. They had the truth. And they openly prof uh, confessed or professed, whatever, the truth. And they taught the people doctrine. But what their, their talk did not match their walk. They said one thing, but did another. That's why he said, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Hmm. Catholics with your Hail Mary full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the loom. And all your, uh, you know, whatever you do. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Like the Jesuits in your uh, confessions who give you all this nonsense to be absolved of sin. They themselves won't even do it. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Showboat. Facade. Religiosity. Mm, like the theater. Like the pageantry. Which is Roman Catholicism. They make broad their phylacteries. Phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, 
and to be called of men rabbi rabbi they love the praises of men more than the praises of god uh, luke 16 14 and 15. so right there and greetings in the marketplace and love the uppermost rooms at feast at feasts covetousness and the chief seats in the synagogues wanted to be like they run to the front they want to be the star of the show and greetings in the marketplaces markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi and the pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things and they derided him and he said unto them Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God, he does know we are heart, knoweth your heart, for that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. For so, for, so, for someone come along trying to defend a devil like Keith Green, um, who's the Pharisee? Who's the Pharisee? Covetous. Covetous. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will be like the Most High. Hmm. And thus, they were actual hypocrites. Now go back to Matthew 23, verses 13 on to 33. Yeah, we're going to read a little here. Here's a great definition of what a Pharisee is. Right here. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. And of course, when the free gracer who gets left behind, and they're all going to be left behind, uh, convince you people who are left behind, you Christians, to take the mark of the beast by just believe and receive, you're going to be damned to hell. They're not going. They're not going to be going uh, to heaven or going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses. Oh, the secreta monita, the secreta monita audio book will be in the description. But you know what? That'll be number three. Uh, listed in the description box. First one will be the music video, second one will be last Friday's video, and third will be the Secreta Monita. Read about how the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, goes after the widows. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Long prayer! The Roman Catholic Missal! Not spelled like the weapon missile, but missal, okay? Long prayers, okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than him themselves, than yourselves. The people who free grace deceive, are worse than the ones who are deceiving them. And you know what's funny? It's not funny. It's laughable. Uh, the guys who are promoting this garbage, uh, like the talk show host Elmer, praise that he isn't, and uh, you know other devils, um, they they say, like, "Wow, those guys are worse than we are." <laughs> okay. Woe unto you, ye blind! guides but yet their eyes are open but they're blind which say whosoever shall swear by the temple it is nothing whosoever shall swear by the gold love of money is the root of all evil but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple he is a debtor ye fools the fool says in his heart there is no God and blind for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? 
And we are redeemed by precious things better than gold and silver. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon the altar, he is guilty. Ye fools, twice again, and blind. So the Pharisee, so thus far, wait, ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. So the Pharisees were a sect of Judaism. They were zealous for the law. They knew the law. They knew the scriptures. They were covetous, greedy. They were also fools and blind. They loved the praises of men. They loved the things that were of man, not of God. Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest the things that be of men and not of God. I might have just got that backwards. Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by all things thereon. Whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwell therein. And today, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. God dwelleth not in temples made by hands. Do you realize when you're going to church, you're doing a Catholic practice? Brother Alexander B. Hartley. Okay, that'll be the uh, that'll be the fourth video. Uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley. He did the labor. Those are perfect because it's scripture. Okay, there's only one incident in all of scripture that could be equated as church being referenced onto a building. But you look at the context. It's in context of pagans calling their thing, their robbers of churches, pagans, worshipers of Diana, Roman Catholic Mary, okay, okay, <laughs> hell cries Mary, okay, Mary. Remember people, the Mary of scripture is not God forbid, is not the Mary of Roman Catholicism. Okay? Verse 22, And he that sweareth, and he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted weightier matters of the law, it begins with judgment. Omitted judgment. They'll judge you, but the three fingers? Mercy and faith, these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guy, that's three times now. That's three times. Okay? Okay? Ye blind guides, which strain at a net and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee! Cleanse that which that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and full of all uncleanness. Christianity. Christianity and all her little denominations, including your your precious King James Bible believing Christianity. It's another denomination. It's, that's all it is. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! And what are we reading to? Verse 33. Because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, If we had been in the days of our fathers, 
we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Verse 33 is showing you that Jesus was calling the Pharisees lost. Hmm. One second, please. Second Corinthians four. Second Corinthians four, verses one on to verse four. Second Corinthians four, verses one on to verse four. You notice that the Lord said these guys were blind quite a bit. At least four times at least. At least. He was really getting the point across. But yet, they had eyes. They could see, couldn't they? First Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 1 and 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifest, manifestation of the truth, Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Our walk matching our talk. When it's the four walls and the ceiling and the floor, one and the same. But if our gospel be hid, the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, What gospel? What gospel? The lazy gospel of the uh, free grace? No. <laughs> I'm surprised, sweetheart, you haven't done one on that one yet. You will, sooner or later. Anyway, <laughs> why I respect you, I don't know. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the little g God of this world, that's Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Hmm. So, the Pharisees were sect, very zealous, they knew the scriptures, they were covetous, they were blind, <laughs> okay, they were hypocri hypocrites, they loved the praises of men, Mark 7. Mark 7. You know what also is a very big defining trait of a Pharisee? <laughs> oh, yes, I did. Mark 7, 1 on the 13. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw none of his disciples eat bread, and when they saw some, excuse me, of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, without unwashing hands, they found fault. Even today, the, um, the Jews... They got this whole thing where they get the, the kippers and the shawls and they get salt water, I believe they use, and they, they say the prayers and they throw it onto the tables and wash all this stuff, okay, stuff like that, okay? They do that even today. They do that at the Seder dinners, Passovers. Uh, they, that's what they do. They do that, the Hasidim especially, they do that today, okay? For the Pharisee and all the Jews except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come forth, and when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. Many other things there be, 
which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and pots, brazen vessels and of tables. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Yeah, there's no room in their heart. For two, when they are their own God, they are their own standard. Okay? A lot of things in the description box. Okay? Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now, does that not give you a good, clear picture of Roman Catholicism? Colossians 2, verse 8, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. That's what the Hasidim do. That's what Catholics do. That's what Christianity does. You take the tradition of man above Scripture. For lying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things do things ye do. It was at the Council of Trent when the Roman Catholic Church came together and they came and they dug their heel in the dirt and they said, we are going to hold to tradition more so than scripture. And to a Catholic, scripture is overridden by tradition. Okay? And any Catholic who's even that much of their salt will freely confess that to you. It's like, yeah, the traditions, you know. So, and he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, what does that mean? That is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. What does that mean? Your mother and father need help. It's like, I, I can't, uh, you know, tight wad. <laughs> okay, uh, I can't help you with this because this is, you know, my tithe. Remember what Sam Smith said, you got to give 10% 10, 10 is required today. After that, you're actually... Pfft. And ye suffer no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Blind. Blind. Because they wanted to do what they wanted to do. John 9, 39 and 41. The, okay, the Pharisees. They were a sect. They were zealous. They knew the scriptures. They were covetous. They loved the praises of men. They were hypocrites. Okay? All right? They were hypocrites. Very covetous. I don't know if I already said that. Okay? They were blind. Why? And also, they put their traditions above the Word of God. In 
in John 9, 39 on 41. And Jesus said, for judgment, I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? And I can just picture these Pharisees, like, We, hey, hey, look at us. We're zealous for the law and traditions, man. Yeah, we, we, who is this? Who's, you know, who is this? Ha, uh, speak like this, ne having never learned letters, right? Oh, and we love the praises. Yeah, call me rabbi. Call me rabbi, okay? We're hypocrites. So look at how, what I do for the Lord, okay? All right, yeah, yeah. Are we blind too? Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If you were blind, ye should have no sin. Didn't know. Physical blindness. But now ye say we see. We know better. We know better. Well, the oldest and best. Don't get me started on that. If you were blind, ye should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. Genesis 3, 1 on 5. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Questioning what God said. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. He said that. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Uh, look at verse 17 in chapter 2. You look at that right now. Look at it. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He never said, Don't touch it. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. No. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You are the criteria. You are the deciding factor for what is right or what is wrong. Get a Bible that suits you, huh? Let's end this in 2 Peter, chapter 2. So, what is it we've seen scripturally what a Pharisee is? So, the reality is, the individual who accused me of being a Pharisee, actually himself, was a Pharisee. So when you hear these Christians refer to you as a Pharisee, it's a defensive measure just like, you can't judge me, God knows my heart, you're a Pharisee, they're defensive measures to defend sin. Contemporary Christian music is sin. Live with it. Deal with it. Okay? In Scripture, in the New Testament, where is it said that we are to worship in song and spiritual songs with instruments. That's a valid point that someone brought up in that music video. Well, we can assume. Should we talk about what that means? But anyway, okay. So, remember, when one of these Christians Brown, no good truth, but because you have your in your thumbnail about Keith Green, that wicked devil, you, you're a, you're a Pharisee. No, you're a Pharisee. Second Peter two two on verse seventeen two seventeen Second Peter chapter two verse seventeen on the twenty two. These are wells without water. 
clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. That's all Christianity is. Through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error while well, they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought into bondage. Where are we going now, brother? Where are we going now, brother? You know. You know where to go, son. You know where to go, son. Romans 6, 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, where the free grace are in their theology. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? They say yes. What does God through Paul say? God forbid. Free Gracer says, what, sh what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? The free gra Gracer says, yes. What does God say through Paul? God forbid. Genius. Back to 2 Peter, verse 20, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. Continue on, on to verse 20. At verse 20. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning because they fall away and lost people fall away. Okay? Lost fall away. Saints fall all the time. Lost fall away. So, better to be ignorant than to know and do contrary, sweetheart. For it had been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb... The dog is turned to his, a male, own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her, female, obviously, wallowing in the mire. So dog, male, sow, pig, female. So, dear Mr. Uh, <laughs> Elder Duckling, now, I, 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 was, I was very kind <laughs> and restrained from bashing you extremely because you can't defend yourself. You can make a video and do whatever. And, and I'm sure you'll put in, you know, John 3.16 is the gospel. <laughs> so, Pharisee. What is Pharisee? Simply put, a Catholic. A Catholic. Calvinist traditions of men. German Catholic, which is a Lutheran. Presbyterians, Meth Methodists. Some Baptists, Pentecostals. Yeah. King James Bible believing Christianity. You're looking at me, dude. You're the Pharisee. You're the Pharisee. Says who? Me? No. Says the perfect and Aaron, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version of the scripture, son. So, that's going to be it for this video. Feeling a little better. <laughs> Hopefully the Lord will let me get this... Uh, 
uh, put up if uh, something goes really bad uh, brother Alexander you will get a email uh, with the password to this channel and also to the other one and then um, you know what to do but um, who knows who knows thank you for watching this if you do dear brother um, keep me in prayer uh, hopefully hopefully Lord willing this week uh, that video about the angel of the Lord will come that that's like I said that's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of stuff to do and we're we're working on it okay so I haven't forgotten about you but this was something that needed to be brought up today so thank you for watching this if you do I love you and Lord willing I please keep us in prayer <laughs> please keep us in prayer by the way we need all the help we can get uh, we need your prayers okay I've been having a rough week and as you saw in this video you know some of the stuff that I deal with health-wise is happening. So, anyway, I love you, brethren, sisters, and saints. And we will see you, Lord willing, in the next video.